What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Harsh Language Podcast. Dan, Dusty, and Marvin are back with you again today. Ahoy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's going on, everyone? How are we doing? Doing great. Um, yeah, haven't caught up on my shows for the week, though, sadly. I haven't watched anything from Sunday, I guess. That's when most stuff comes on. Yeah, I'm two Kingstown, episodes. Mm -hmm. Last of Us. I haven't watched those for this week yet. Oh, you didn't watch The Last of Us? Not yet. Now I'm pissed because I wanted to talk about it. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I won't watch it after this. I'll still complain, but I won't spoil anything. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, I'm two episodes behind on Kingstown as well. I've been going to sleep, like, early for me. And uh, I just haven't been able to, like, do shit. <laughs> I also have to finish Superman and Lois. Dusty and I were talking about it off air because he fin he fucking blew by me. He started it late Damn. and then fucking lapped my ass. Mm -hmm. um, I'm only a couple episodes, like short of finishing season two but i do want to finish it before season three starts but then again i was thinking too like i ain't gonna be watching that shit week to week i'm probably gonna let it pile up in season three mm. so is there really Great. a rush and then mandalorian comes out on when well midnight tonight actually yeah. uh which interesting a lot of, a lot week, of week stuff two. coming out you guys yeah, need to catch up because there's a lot of stuff coming out yep the anxiety is starting to hit yep the upcoming shit anxiety. Um, Ted Lasso, Lucky mm -hmm. Hand, Yellow Jackets, Lucky Secession, Hank. Perry Mason. Is that what you meant? Lucky Hank? Oh, yeah, Lucky Hank. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say Lucky Hank. I didn't hear that one. Funny enough, I was talking to my dad about The Mandalorian tonight. He came over for dinner. He's not a huge, like, Star Wars. I mean, he, he's a Star Wars fan just from growing up in that time. And obviously, he's the one that, like, made me watch it when I was a kid. But, uh... He doesn't like follow it. I took him to see uh, Rise of Sky, um, not Rise of Skywalker, The Force Awakens when it came out, and those three. Uh, but apparently, he was saying because a commercial for Mandalorian came on TV, and he was like, "He's like, oh, I watched an episode of that the other night." I was like, "When the fuck did you get Disney Plus?" He's like, "Oh no, it was on ABC." And I was like, "What?" what? I was like, "Are you sure you?" Oh, because he asked me. He's like, "Who's that little Yoda guy?" And I was like, oh, that's Grogu. Yeah. I was like, how the fuck do you know about Grogu? Uh, but apparently, I guess as like a promotion, they aired it on ABC. Like the first They'll do that the first sometimes. Season. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised. I didn't know. Yeah. The first season. Season. You, can watch, you can watch the first episode of, uh, I think, the latest season of Picard on YouTube from Paramount's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. But... Yeah. So yeah, that surprised me. But yeah, I'm a little bit behind. A couple of movies I wanted to watch too that I don't know if we're going to cover here, but just movies that I was interested in that I wanted to watch. Um, and then I saw, I just saw, or I was recommended something. Uh, what's the name of it? Joey recommended it to me. A show called uh, The Dropout. Mm. He told me about it. Um, the Dropout... It sounds pretty interesting. It's Amanda Seyfried, and it's a series that chronicles Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes and her attempt to revolutionize the healthcare industry after dropping out of college and starting a technology company. Um, hey, you guys know how I feel about the healthcare industry, so this might be right up my alley, but I'm not actually familiar with Theranos. I've never heard of it before. Um, but apparently it's a private corporation that uh basically had like breakthrough health technology and shit like that so i guess it's about the founder and i don't know seemed interesting oh, nice so, i don't know maybe i'll check that out is that the company that came up with that uh reverse aging shit i've been hearing about on oh i don't feed and shit i don't know that'd be interesting speaking <laughs> of reverse aging and uh i guess the comedy of life itself but um, you know, as you guys know, my, I had to recently put my dog down and, yep. uh, <laughs> it was kind of like, like really type of thing. But Jon Stewart on his podcast, the problem with Jon Stewart, he had somebody on, she's the founder of a tech company 
that is developing uh, products that can, uh, I guess, decrease the age, the effective age in dogs. And um, oh, wow. I listened to the podcast, and I, I guess the goal would be eventually it could be used in humans as well. Uh, but she's like initially developing it for pets. And it's uh, apparently been sort of successful because it's in the second phase of its trials where they're testing it on companion pets, they call them. So just like if I had a dog, I'd be like, hey, yeah, you could try it on my dog. See how it goes. Mm -hmm. And then the next phase... So they upgraded it from monkeys to your pets. They upgraded it from specifically lab testing to like real world (laughs) testing. And then if it passes that, it'll get go through FDA approval and then be available. Uh, But apparently it's like you know, administered by vets. And if, if a dog was undergoing the treatment, it would be like every couple of months they would get a shot. And supposedly it slows down the, uh, cause, cause as you know, dogs age like way quicker than humans do. Yeah. Especially bigger mm-hmm. dogs. So, you know, by like in bigger dogs, like, like Emma was a golden retriever by like seven or eight, they're considered like old as fuck. Yeah. Like right. that's being a, like a senior dog. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, little dogs a little bit different, but yeah, so apparently this is supposed to slow that down. I don't really know all the ins and outs of it, but it was pretty interesting to me. So I don't know, maybe we're going to be living in a world where like, I don't know, there's some fountain of youth fucking thing invented someday. Yeah. Or it just works on pets only for the rest of... <laughs> hey, that's fine. And then pets are just outliving... That's fucking pet, pet. fine. Pets are just in the family for like five generations. Just chilling. There is something heartbreaking about a pet that's like left behind when like their owner dies. Mm. That happens a lot with like old people. They just like drop dead and then their like dog has to be put up for adoption or something. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. That's really sad. However, I would way rather my dog outlive me than me outlive my dog because it's, it's a conversation I've been having a lot recently, actually, not to bring down the vibe of the show, but... You know, since Emma passed away, everybody's like, oh, you're going to get another dog? You're going to get another dog? And I'm just like, well, for sure not yet, because it's been like a month and a half. But also, I don't even know, like, I, like why would you want to put yourself through that again? Right? Yeah. And everybody's like, well, you know, it's about like the love you give the dog and the love that they give you while they're around and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just like, it is heartbreaking to watch them get old and sick and then die. And I don't know if I want to go through it again. But so, but like, if I could have a dog live for fucking ever, that'd be great. My first dog, Harley, she was a miniature pincher. She fucking lived till she was like 18. <laughs> fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. And then also, apparently, you could like clone your dog nowadays, but not like you think. It's not like that movie with fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger type of cloning. But, Damn it they could create another dog with like your dog's DNA. So it's not like right. a literal like clone. Well, yeah. It's like it has a its own consciousness. It just has all. Yeah. And that's not, there's not the same dog. It just has all its uh, genetic Genius. attributes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. We're getting there. I don't know if you and I or three of us will see it play out, but there will someday be a world. If we don't blow, we sh- blow our shit up. <laughs> We're like cloning exists and. All sorts of crazy type of fucking sci-fi shit. Yeah. It's cool. It is cool. Focus, I feel like it's focusing on the weird shit, though, as far as, like, technological advancement. I mean, that's always been the case, though. Yeah, maybe we can start with cancer, but <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how conspiratorial... Save the dogs! <laughs> depending on how conspiratorial you want to get. I, it's fucking hard for me to imagine there's not some sort of cure for cancer. Maybe not, a, like, a straight-up cure, but something... Like, a more, like, a more, like, feasible method of like eliminating it yeah or putting it into remission or something like that right Uh, i know we've made huge huge strides but like still it's just like really it's just Mm -hmm. like reproduction of cells like how hard could that be to stop i don't know i'm not a fucking scientist so i don't know maybe i'm talking out my ass but yeah i don't know either i don't know how much of cancer is like it just they didn't get checked for it in time or if it's more more like well, just can- some cancers are just a death sentence as soon as you get them. I don't know the specifics. Well, it's definitely a little bit of both. I think they become a death sentence because by the time you catch it, it's like yeah. too late. Like pancreatic cancer is like pretty devastatingly severe. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. because there's like almost no symptoms, no symptoms. until it's yeah. too late. So, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe they could focus on uh, <laughs> testing for cancers instead of looking for the cure. Because the yeah. cure seems... Uh, yeah, early fair. signs. Early, early signs, signs yeah. 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 That's fair. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not smart. I'm not smart medicine. enough for that shit. Stuff you could take that keeps you from getting cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, also, who knows? You know, we're talking about The Last of Us every week. Like, there's for sure another major pandemic looming. Like, the COVID was predictable. It was predicted. Like, everybody knew it was coming. It's just we weren't prepared for it because our government's run by clowns. But there's going to be another one coming. And it's probably going to be worse than COVID. I don't think it's going to be like Last of Us type of shit. But, like, there could be a real fucking bad one. So yeah. they, they need to be prepared for that shit. Bird but, flu's back. In some yeah, country. I saw. I saw that. Yeah, there's like I think it was Cambodia. Yeah, a couple something. couple people got. Uh, infected. There's always going to be bird flu and swine flu variants, right? That's true, but the danger becomes when it could jump from human to human. That's the thing with the bird flu. Right. If the bird flu was a human to human transmission, it would be like fucking like wipe out half the population. It'd be like some Thanos <laughs> shit, but. It's because of that human-to-human transmission. But, you know, shit could just adapt overnight. Some and... say Thanos was right. Yeah, I'd say... He kind of was right. Moral... Speaking of, I've been watching Marvel Yeah, Marvel you movies. mentioned that. How's that yeah. been going? Over the past couple of weeks. It's been great. Yeah? It's been great, yeah. What made watched, you start um, to finally catch up? Uh, you were just sick of being left in the dust? Or what? Yeah. We were, well, we were talking about some... Something I forgot what we talked oh, about. Speaking of Emma, there she is on my cup. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so I was like, yeah, okay, let me just see what I actually haven't seen. Right. Um, oh, because we were talking, I was talking about putting a list together of what's necessary out of the first 23 yeah, films or whatever. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. So I went back and I watched, uh, where did I start? I think I did watch the original Avengers again. And then I was like, oh, shit, I've never seen Ultron somehow. So I watched Ultron. I think, I don't know if the Spider-Man movie, where it is in that uh, order, but I watched that either before or after Ultron. I can't remember where it takes place in the uh, the release date order or whatever. Spider-Man? Yeah, the first one. Uh, it was like way after. Oh, okay, yeah, so I watched that. The, the first um, Spider-Man came after Civil War because he was first introduced I in watched, Civil War. I watched Civil War too. Yeah, Ooh, I watched that. It? Civil War is probably, ah, whew, man, it's hard. You know, we talked about this last week when we talked about yeah. Ant Man, and Dusty and I both said, like, in those early years, you'd be hard pressed to pick like a top, top five or top three list. Yeah. But I feel like if I was being honest with myself, Civil War is in that top five for me. For I think sure. Civil War was good. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing: I'm not that interested in captain america as a as a character oh uh, he's not just, that interesting to me so oh what the f- I mean, what are you like, doing just, to me he's just not that interesting to me um uh how can i change your mind marvin i don't know tell me what it is that you don't think he's interesting what is what is about him too much america maybe i don't know it's just fucking it's it's too it's too it's too cliche for one it's it's like I don't. I, I just. I just couldn't get into it. He's, Do you? Not... Uh, let me ask you this question. I briefly mentioned this when we talked about the movie, but do you find Superman uninteresting? No. All right. Superman's from fucking outer space. Yes, that's true. But take that out yeah, of it. He doesn't swear allegiance to any one nation either. Well, neither does Cap. He's... Really, like his title yeah. is Captain America, but he's like. Right. His allegiance is mm. to people, just like Superman's is. That's why I love Captain America. The same reason I love Superman is because they're just pure of heart and they just do what's good because it's the right thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, that's no why in Civil area. War, he was willing to take a stand and yeah. say no to the big government. Measures big government. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, because, I mean, I mean, so Civil War poses an interesting question. It's a little bit different in the movie than actually it's a lot a bit different in the movie than it is in, yes. in, in the comic books. But the, the central theme is still there that it's like the government has taken measures that sort of handcuffs the heroes from doing what they feel that they, that, that they need to do. And it's one side being like, yeah, no, we kind of agree with the government. And the other side, Cap side, being like, no, nah, fuck that. Like, we're our best... Uh, 
Overwatch overseers or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I get like you even, get that a lot with the X Men too, registering mutants. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's coming, and I. I didn't say it when we talked about Ant Man briefly, Marvin. I don't mean to derail what you were talking about, but yep. I have a feeling th- all these phase four things that we've seen and now phase five, mm-hmm. these were all like well in development before they knew that they were getting the X Men and Fantastic Four back, like for sure, because yeah, that's why we're scraping the bottom of the barrel kind of right now with like mm-hmm. characters and stuff. Yeah. But I have a feeling once this. I, for sure, this this multiversal war thing that we're gonna get with Battle World and all that, the Secret Wars, it's gonna reset shit. And I think the next big event will be like whatever they call it, the mutant saga or whatever. And we're gonna see a whole different MCU where it's gonna be like primarily and rightfully so focused on the mutants and the social issues that come along with it and the government intervention and all that stuff that we that is present in X Men comic books. Right. Um, and I think the reason I think it'll be solely focused on, not solely focused on the X-Men, but like um, that'll be the major focus. You can't really do that. St- like, I don't see a world where it's like they focus on that stuff, like mutant registration and all that. Because really it's racism. That's what it's about. And that, that's the parallel. I can't see that being the main focus. And then like, you know, they just jump to like, What's Scott Lang up to these days? You know what I mean? It just seems, it doesn't seem to fit, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll see how they do it. But yeah. anyway, I'm sorry, Marvin. No, um, what else you, did I watch? You liked Civil uh, War, Civil though? War. No, it was great. I think it was great. So um, you were Team Tony then because you hate Cap. I don't hate, I don't hate him. <laughs> I don't hate him. He's just, I don't know. He's, I think he's, uh, I think he's, he's like a fan favorite, I imagine. Yeah, um, he is. I don't know. I guess he's a bit overrated in my eyes. Do you have... He's kind of the Batman of the MCU. Yeah. Do you have... Well, yeah. Do you have Mm. any uh, care? Like, do you give a shit about World War II or, like, history? Um, I guess a little. Uh, Yeah. I've watched some stuff. Maybe that's why there's a disconnect there. Not that I was fucking alive in World War II, but, like, obviously Cap, as was Superman... They were he was born out of like World War Two. He like that's what comic books were back then. It was like, hey, let's fucking get the troops excited and like and that's where Cap came from. And like his first yeah. like one of his first appearances is him punching Hitler on the cover of the thing, right? right? So and then later on, so Captain America was like very, very popular back then in the comic books. And then he took like a nosedive after that like World War Two patriotism started to wear off. Mm-hmm. Cap like kind of took a back seat and they, I think, I think they even canceled his, like his comic. And it wasn't until years later that Stan Lee was like, nah, Cap is fucking dope. Let's revive him. And then they came up with the story of him being buried in the ice and like resurrecting him and putting him back in like modern society. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I get like why you may think the patriotism and that stuff is a little bit cheesy, but if you look beyond that a little bit, it's still it it is just Superman. It's a guy doing what's right because it's right. And that's why he that's why he signed up for the super soldier program is because right. he you know, he was skinny and sickly and all this shit. Basically me. Mm-hmm. And he just he didn't want to defend his country. He wanted to f- defend his fellow people who were fighting. He wanted to stand up to bullies. Yep, that's it. He doesn't like yep. bullies, he doesn't care where they're from. Uh, so in that sense, I, I think he's like super interesting. Same again. As no, I agree. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but I get the patriotism part of it. It's kind of like in it for modern day. It's like, eh, it's kind of cheesy, especially brings up questions about like what it means to be patriotic in America, which is actually the central focus of the Falcon and winter soldier show. Mm. Because as you know, at the I end of that, yeah, yeah. at the end of end game, you know that, you know, cap yep. turns over the shield to Sam well, this, mm-hmm. this show is about Sam, like, being a black man in America and, like, Captain America. Like, I don't represent America, really. And it's right. him, like, kind of struggling with that. and like, ha- So that was, yeah. I think, a very interesting story to tell, too. But, uh, yeah, no, I get the patriotism thing. I get it. No, I, I have to check out that show. Um, I do think that them making him black is cool. That, that's like the Superman, the black Superman thing. That would never fucking happen. No. But it's happening. But it, no, it's not it's they're, happening. They're, no, no, no. They're doing the Valzad thing. That's already been. I th- <laughs> what Dusty's thought, we've talked about this off off the show, Marvin, you and I. But 
they initially jj abrams had this whole script laid out for like a black clark kent and everybody like lost their fucking shit about it but now oh, right. i'm pretty sure michael b jordan's playing val zod who is a black kryptonian but he's not going to mm. be clark kent so right, right. Okay. maybe it won't make it won't ease the people being angry so whatever <laughs> yeah but let's uh, see what was i saying um i think that's pretty much it did you like yeah. spider-man Oh yeah, Spider Man was great. Cause the hill you've been dying on is that Toby's your Spider Man, and it'll never yeah. be topped. No, well you see, I think he definitely was topped like pretty easily. Um, top? I think topped. Yeah. So you think? think so. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get into it. Hang I think, on. I think. Uh, I mean, Toby will always have a special place in my heart. Because, oh yeah, just like Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't just Spider-Man, the movie, but, like, the connection between um, Spider-Man or Peter and, and Tony. And because I watched Endgame again, of course. So you and, like that? Uh, Infinity War. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I like that. See, there were a lot of people. Ed, got to throw Ed under the bus. Shout out. Uh-oh. Ed was not a fan, really. And I think to this day he's still not, like, a huge fan of it that initially Peter was like reliant on Tony that it was Tony's tech and like all this mm, stuff. I think right. a lot, a lot of fans had that sentiment. I can't, I won't spoil anything for you cause I know you haven't finished the Spider-Man trilogy yet, but yeah. yes, the MCU version of Peter Parker and Spider-Man is different from the comic book origins. And a lot of people had issues sure. with that. Well, I think, I think they Tom did, a good... did a good job playing Spider-Man. I think, and I think Toby he was a great Peter. did a way better job doing Peter. No, nah, see, I disagree. I mm. Toby, like, you watch that movie, he's like, he looks like he's 48, and he's in high school and shit. Like, <laughs> like he was good, and don't get, like, you know, again, he'll always have, like, a special place, but I think Tom Holland fucking killed it, personally. Back to the, uh, the tech, the tech part about him, like, yeah. not being true, or being too dependent. I think they did a good job of showing him, uh, being dependent on the suit, so Tony takes it away, and then mm -hmm. he does prove that he's still Spider Man. He doesn't need the suit; it just yeah, it enhances his well his powers. Yeah, again, I won't say too much because I know you haven't watched them. I don't want to spoil them for you, but yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it, that theme is part of his character arc over the course of three movies. Is about because you know the second one, No Way Home takes place right after Endgame. Right. So it's Peter dealing with the loss of, like the world dealing with the loss of Tony Stark. And yeah. and it's Peter like kind of even more so coming into his own as Spider-Man without relying on Tony and just the Avengers in general because he, it, it, the arc they're giving him is him being like an Avenger Spider-Man to the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man that we all know and love. And it's pretty clear that the MCU is trying to set up their like tiered heroes. Like you got like the the Avengers, which are like planet ending fucking global threat <laughs> heroes. Yeah. Your sort of like street level heroes, which will be Spider Man and Daredevil and so right. on and so forth. She Hulk probably those guys. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then although like, She Hulk is like, <laughs> yeah, she's definitely up there with Hulk, right? Better than Hulk. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think they, uh, well, in the comic book, yes, <laughs> she is very powerful, obviously, but in the comic book, and I think they tried to frame it this way in the show, too, is that, you know, part of, she really wants to be a hero with her, like, law abilities. Right. Yeah, yeah. More than her actual super strength, so. Yeah. You know, that's that. Same with Daredevil, for that matter. Like, most of his fights take place in the courtroom. So, right. Yeah. So you don't like Tom Holland, Dusty? <laughs> no, I like him just fine. I thought he did a okay. great job playing Spider-Man. I just, okay. um, it, <clears throat> I'm the original trilogy, I still think, even though yeah. there's, you know, the emo phase. And the, <laughs> I mean, listen, well, I still you know. think, sorry, real quick, I still think yep. Spider-Man 2, the original Spider-Man 2, is one of the best comic book movies ever made. Still. So, it's got that. Is Spider-Man 2, is that the one with... Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. 
Doc Ock was the GOAT. <laughs> maybe I got some, you know, maybe I also have just recency bias because I recently watched the Spider-Man. So I haven't watched the originals in a while. Maybe. I have Raimi bias too, so. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they fucked up. One of my biggest criticisms with them, MCU folk, is that they announced Peter Parker in the trailer for Civil War. Had they not done that, if I went into that theater with no knowledge of Spider-Man and he just swings in and, oh my God, I would have been like, ah! like I would have freaked the fuck out. Yeah, they they care more about securing the, the, the tickets. Well, yeah, than I they guess. they do, uh, you know, I think you that good feeling. <sighs> I don't it was know. largely speculated, though. There were yeah, leaks. Oh, was it? That's so what it was I was kind of already say. out there. I well, feel in that like, case, then, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's why they did it. But, man, how fun was it to see... It's so fun to see the heroes interact on screen the way they do in the comics. Like, his little <laughs> fight with, like, Cap, where Cap fucking... You know, you got heart, kid, and he's like, he's like, where are you from? They're like, ah, Queens. And Cap's like, ah, Brooklyn. And then they just, like, go... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that yeah. shit. yeah. All right, so Marvin's catching up. I'm basically caught up. What haven't I seen? Uh, What's your favorite? Well, I haven't seen Loki, and I haven't seen um, mm. the the new the Captain America show, the one you were talking about with the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your favorite MCU project so far that you've watched? Just Ooh. overall. Uh. Overall, probably, I mean, probably Infinity War, to be honest. All right, well, all right, let's not count o Infinity of... War. Let's not count Infinity War and Endgame, because those are, like, on a level of... That was a way too good. Okay. Yeah, different um, level. Uh, I really, I actually really liked Ultron. Okay. Um, Because I didn't know... I'm a noob, of course. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that um, Vision was basically created, or mm -hmm. he was the vessel for the for the Mind Stone. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know the Mind Stone came from the uh, the the uh, spear, right? The, the yeah 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 spear yeah 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 Loki scepter. I didn't scepter. know. I didn't know Wanda. Loki scepter, yeah. I didn't know. Oh yeah, scepter. Sorry, not spear. I didn't know uh, Wanda was created from the scepter. Well, I didn't know all that stuff. Okay, so. so so that was the MCU's response to they weren't allowed for the longest time. The word mutant couldn't ever be proclaimed oh, in the MCU. Oh, so that's the birth of the enhanced or whatever. So that's why they went with the enhanced. So yeah. it wasn't until it wasn't until Ms. Marvel that recently mm -hmm. came out that the word mutant was ever uttered before wow. in the MCU. So it was a huge deal. But their response to that was Wanda and uh, her brother was Quicksilver. Is that who he is, right? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Quicksilver. Um, but anyway, the Maximoff twins, they were created out of the Mind Stone. Right, mm. because they couldn't be yeah. mutants in the comic books. Because she's a mutant. Mutants. Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Right. And the How other, are they going to retcon that then? Uh, they haven't retconned Multiverse. it. Multiverse. Well, oh, easy. Well, no. In WandaVision, <laughs> you find out that that the the Scarlet Witch is an entity, mm. and Wanda's basically the host of the entity. Is sort of how they kind of framed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The multiverse, so in the comic books, they are the, the children of Magneto. So Whoa. there probably will be a multiversal thing where they bring that back. I, got, I feel like that's too big of a, like a character trait to ignore yeah. going yeah. forward, especially with Magneto. See, this is where I'm still very interested in what they're going to do. We've speculated about it a million times, but their introduction to the mutants... Like, they've started to introduce, like, the concept of mutations and what mutants are, and that there's a lot of them with the most recent things. You know, there's little teases here and there, like, Ms. Marvel's a mutant, fucking this one's a mutant. Um, right. Oh, Namor. Namor, so on and so forth. But there's a lot of history with the mutants that if they go that route where, like, oh, hey, mutants are here now, they can't really explore. Like, for instance, like in the comic books, Wolverine fought alongside Cap in World War II. 
Yeah. So there's like a lot wow. of history that they will have to ignore if they're just like, hey, mutants exist. So I have a feeling it's going to be a blend of like, I don't know. He fought in all the major war, yeah. world wars. Well, yeah, that's the thing. But like also Magneto's like a child of the Holocaust. Like that's his backstory. Yeah, right. I could see right. a world where they change it for modern audiences so that maybe he's like a child of like slavery or maybe just like um like not slavery but like the civil rights movement in the 50s like i could see them doing that and that'd be perfectly fine it still maintains the core of the character that he just comes from like a social hardship right uh because that's why that's like the core of his entire being that's why he's against humans he's like humans fucking suck yeah, like i've yeah, yeah. seen them at their worst meanwhile xavier's like the one who's like no 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 we need to like work with them so i don't know we'll see what happens but i'm glad you've catching up yeah. and you're enjoying them yeah i'm glad too i mean i think it's going to be hard for them to uh like speaking about the mutants what are they going to say everyone was created from some type of fucking infinity stone like they're going to have to i don't know how are they going to i think the going thing right now is the only piece of information is that in ms marvel Spoilers, I know neither of you have seen it, but at the end, her friend is like a super genius because it's, you know, comic books. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I tested your blood and whatever's giving you the power. She, in the, in the, in the show, she's get, she gets this like, um, I forget what they call it, but it's like a gauntlet type. It's a like a band. bracelet. It's a band. Yeah, it's a bracelet from like way deep in her family history. And the mm -hmm. whole time she thinks that's what's giving her her powers. And he tells oh, her, he, he's like, no, it's actually, you have had the power in you all along. This just seemed to unlock it. And, and then at the end, he's like, he's like, I tested your blood. And he's like, your blood's different. He's like, you have a mutation. And when he says that, you hear, mm. -la 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 -la, uh, which is the X-Men theme. And I fucking. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it was great. <laughs> so I have a, so basically what they're going with is something I think they're going to use different things. It's, it's just like everybody has the mutation. It's just what's unlocking it. It has to be something of extreme power. So whether it be the snap and the, bl the blip mm. and them coming back or the quantum bands, which is spoilers, that's what, probably what they are, or some version of them for the movies, uh, or, you know, the interaction with the Infinity Stone, something like that. Got it. But okay. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Look forward yeah. to that. Yeah. <clears throat> um. What have you been watching? In the comics, you just have the mutant gene, and then it's activated sometime through adolescence. Well, right. in the comic books, it's tied to the Eternals and the Celestials. The Celestials yeah. came to Earth and created humans, mutants, and the Deviants. Oh, oh I'm sorry. God. Humans, the Deviants, and uh, I think the Eternals. Think, and, and then the... Yeah, was, yeah and then just humans and Deviants, and then... And the, the mutation the was a byproduct yeah. of that, yeah. Correct. Of their experimentation. Huh. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, right now I'm. I don't know. You know, I said it last time. I, I, my excitement is waning a little bit. Like I'm. I'm hyped to see Guardians because I. I can't wait to see the cap to that trilogy. But. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, know. I'm super excited for Guardians now. Yeah, it's those are some good stories. Again, James Gunn, National Treasure. Yep. Um, what have you been watching, Dusty? You're always like fucking watching three or four shows at a time. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, Shrinking is one that I sat down oh, and watched yeah. this week. Yeah, yeah you mentioned it's, that to me. It's it's great. Yeah, Jason Siegel and Harrison Ford, Luke Danny. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, great shit. cast, great stories. Um, it's hilarious. It's sad. It's real. It's yeah, it's just an all around pretty good show. Can't complain about it. And I'm still watching The Ark, which is kind of like The 100, but not really. The space uh, ship trying to go to another planet has problems. Mm. All the elite officers and everything were in cryopods on one part of the ship, and that shit got all blown away, so they're all of dead. Course, so it's all yeah. the recruits and shit yeah. having to figure shit out. Uh, it's only it a few episodes good. in, but uh, yeah, it's you know space sci-fi stuff. It's pretty good um space stuff is just so hit or miss it's mm -hmm. ridiculous it has to be the most inconsistent genre i feel like of of the genres <laughs> yeah yeah it's pretty crazy uh, i also caught up when we were talking offline a little bit i caught up with it's always sunny because oh, i didn't yeah. watch the the last season so oh yeah we then talked picard about picard is pretty good i don't know um this so season three right now it's 
but they're they're like eight to ten episodes. It's not bad. It's a, I think they're doing a pretty good justice. It's better than some of the other stuff. Like I tried to watch Discovery. Um, the first season is somewhat enthralling, but then after that, like the main character, she's basically invincible and the solution to everything. And all it, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. You it know, goes off the rails of, a little bit. Speaking of, it's always sunny. I was fucking. I watched the first episode, and I was like, "Huh, this is what you like, Dan? Just hard R's and." <laughs> they don't say the N word in that show. Oh yeah, they do. They do. What the fuck? In Are what you episode? Me? Episode one, literally. The very first episode. The very first episode, the the guy that looks like you says it's the hard R. Charlie? Charlie? Yes. I do not remember that, but I'm watching it's... it tonight, and I'm going to get back to you. <laughs> I was like, Dan, this is what you're trying to get me to watch right now? Seriously? Can you give me the context, at least? Um, Not that it matters, but what was the... I want the you to tell me... Was about... Just tell no, me about it. I don't remember it. the context. I don't remember the context. How? I remember the context. I mean, I just remember, I remember the episode was about... Uh, they turned the bar into a gay bar. Yeah. And the black dude was gay. Yeah. Um, Charlie <laughs> was like super not interested in a black girl. So they thought he was like racist. And then about pretty, I, I swear he said the hard, I'm pretty sure. There's no way, dude. It was on fucking FX. Dude, it's whole I'm, fucking time. There's no way. I heard. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> Maybe you felt it. I wouldn't make this you? up. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to watch it tonight. I'll get back to you for confirmation, but I do not remember that. But just so you're aware. Like, this is what y'all are into? It's, this is, okay. Like, so, it was funny, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was hilarious. Sunny is basically live action South Park. That's the best way to think about it. <laughs> because South yeah. Park is the most ridiculous thing. But the funny thing about Sunny is these these four, pe- five people, really. Well, not yeah. where you're at, but. It's 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 five characters, and they are the most like crude, egotistical, sometimes maniacal people like ever. And the yeah. comedy of the show is that they don't know that they're the weird ones. Oh, okay. Like, but they and there's times where they interact with outside people, and yeah. those people see them as they are. Like, what the fuck? Like, what do you guys do? <laughs> And that's the funny, that's, that's like the comedy of the show is that it's just, it's just pure ridiculousness. Yeah. So I don't remember that. I have to go back and watch it, but. Yeah. I just, uh, just to make sure I'm not crazy. I did look up the script Mm -hmm. for the first episode and I see it right here. hundred (laughs) percent. Read it, but obviously don't say it. You know what I mean? Uh, Charlie, that's true. No, this is Charlie speaking. That's true. They do have blank hanging from the rafters. A hard R. Hard, hard R, plural. I have to go Wait, back and watch it. What is true? What's the line before it? Uh, uh, Mac says, you heard him when he's prompting everybody and they, everybody and their mom was looking to get in. And Charlie replies, that's true. They do have blank hanging from the rafters. It's in quotes. So it seems like he was quoting something probably. Yeah. All right. I have to go back yeah. and watch it. Yep. That's your boy. That's episode your boy. One. That's your boy. That's what you claim, then. Wow. I mean, no, listen, I'm just playing. No, I know. <laughs> well, hey, Charlie. Listen, Marvin, if you're going to watch it, keep watching it because it's just, <laughs> it's, it's an unbelievable show. And the no, mark, it was funny. It was funny. And the mark of how good the show is is the fact that in the last season that Dusty just watched, like, I fucking wept like a baby <laughs> in a show that is just pure ridiculousness. Yeah. They somehow managed to have like heart and soul to it. It's such a mm. Sunny's not for everybody. I'll give it that. Like, and it's not, I'm not trying to be like a fucking, uh, <laughs> just don't get it. Yeah. No, I'm not understand. trying to be like that. It's like with Sunny, it's like people either hate it or they love it. There's no in between where it's like, yeah, I watched it. It's okay. You don't, it's like you love it or you hate it. There's no in between. Yeah. yeah it was, no, it was funny. And you have to understand like what it is that it's just not meant to be taken seriously at all. Yeah. Like it's so, you know. All right, I have to. I'm literally watching episode one tonight because I have to know what the context of that was. He dropped it. He, he dropped it. He dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped it. He did it. Um, That's fine. I mean, listen, I watch. I fucking watch all kinds of comedians. So that that isn't, uh, you know, 
Mm-hmm. I'm not that. Uh, I feel assistive. you. No, I know you. Know. I, I watched Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy. Oh, I mean so. Richard Pryor. Like fucking nobody said that word more than him. I don't even yeah. think fucking what's his name, the the, the uh, Duke. What the fuck is the guy's name? The the clan, the KKK, like Grandmaster, <laughs> who's always talking about Trump. What's his name? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I know can't think of his that. name. I don't think he Duke, said it. As Duke well. Ellington. No, that's come on, Marvin. That's a fucking jazz musician. Oh yeah. No, I'm thinking of Duke. Uh... What, what I want to say Winston say Duke, Duke, but that's the actor from fucking. Who am I us. thinking of? I don't know. Whatever. Not I'm us. So. Never mind. Anyway. Anyway. Who knows? So I want to talk about Last of Us a little bit. I know you haven't watched it, Marvin. So I'm no, not gonna... just don't. Let's just skip it. No, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna drop any spoilers. I'm not. I okay. promise you. Okay. Okay. I just want to say, and I already told you this last time, so it's not a spoiler. Mm-hmm. I told you that this episode prior to us watching it, that it's not, it wouldn't focus on Joel and Ellie. I told you this. Yes. Okay. So I'm not spoiling anything. So well, I saw the preview, so I already saw that. Okay. It's based yeah. on the DLC called Let Left Behind. And it just, oh. it's a little bit of like Ellie's backstory. Oh, that's good. Okay. And you hated it. No, I didn't hate it. I thought the episode <laughs> was great. However. Okay. What about Ed? We gotta get Ed. Yeah, he what liked. Did he tell you he liked um, it. He liked it. But I think just, so. Ed only hated one episode so far, right? He didn't even hate the episode. He just didn't like that they changed the outcome of right. okay. Bill's story. Basically, got it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this show's been great, and I know you know you guys want to know what I think because I kind of went into it a little bit nervous, but I think the issue that I'm having with the show at this point. What was what are, this next episode is going to be? What episode seven next week? Next right? week, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. So I think at this point, seven episodes. There's nine total. I think the issue that I'm having with the show, if you if it could even be called an issue, is that in the game you had fifteen to twenty hours to spend with your main characters, and to watch them go from being like you know sort of barely aligned like enemies to father and daughter, like that's the yeah. story. The show only has nine hours to do that. Yeah. And I've already said several times that the the plot has been rushed. Like, the point we're at in the show is, like, it came very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So by compressing that time, it puts a lot more pressure to force these two characters together, in my opinion. So the time that they spend not building that relationship is interesting to me. Because, yeah, I want to see Joel and Ellie. Now, this is two episodes that have been dedicated to not Joel and Ellie. And I get why they've done it. It fleshed out... The world. Different things, fleshed out the world. It's preparing us for the end, which I obviously will not spoil, but it's preparing us to be in a particular mindset by the end of this story. Uh, But, yeah, I want to see Joel and Ellie. Yeah. Because I, I do think... I, you know, I talked a lot about how I was worried that the actors wouldn't do a good, as good a job as they did in the game, but I think they've been pretty great together, and I want to spend more time with them, and I want to see them love each other. And the more time I think we spend apart from them, I get a little bit less interested. Uh, because, you know, again, two episodes, we're giving all this love to characters that, like, aren't them. And I get right. that a show is telling the story differently. It has to, because it's a show. It's a different medium. But it's just been an interesting decision to me to have two episodes now that that take you out of that Joel and Ellie relationship. Um, I'm not saying it's right or wrong decision. It's just interesting to me. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Mm. Dusty, are you I feeling? Fair point. Are you feeling any of that as well, or no? Uh, Having played yeah, the game, a, a little bit, uh, and I think a lot of it is like uh, my problem with the show. I guess right now is that. It feels a little more Walking Dead-ish than I thought it would be, whereas mm. it's more about human drama, which the story is about mm. the, the human drama, but but it's always focused there's, on Joel there's and There's basically Ellie. no clickers or any like, and I, maybe that's <laughs> yeah. money spent per episode because you haven't really seen any of the fights, any of the struggles, any of the learning how to deal with them and get around with them. Like you hear about them and you've seen them a couple times, but. Basically, their travels have been uninhibited 
except for talking about the dangers of the clickers and that's fair you know the bloaters and everything i wanted to see more of that so again yeah. i i think the show is great it's been great so far i think it will end very strong it's just not the game and i guess maybe that's not fair to say because it, it could never have been the game uh no. so uh, the, the only other thing too that i i have to criticize and i didn't realize this see a lot of the reactions i'm having to the show again the show is good. It's objectively good. I think it's great. But most of my reactions to the show, I might have said this before, I don't know, at some point, but most of my reactions to the show, the emotional reactions, I'm having, I cry a lot during this show. I just want to <laughs> throw that out there. But most of those reactions are because of the game. It's because of my knowledge of the game that something in the show reminds me of. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. There was a moment in this episode, it's a song that's playing in the background for a moment. And it's a song from the game. And it reminded me of the game and, and that moment in the game. And that's why I cried. So the, the responses that I'm having is because the show is purely reminding me of what I already experienced in the game. And that's fine. I'm a player, so that's probably bound to happen. Well, now, I told you my aunt has been watching it. No, obviously she hasn't played the game. She's like 70. <laughs> but, sorry, I don't mean to be ageist. Old people can play video games, too. Uh, but the last yeah, fucking video WoW game... Grandma? Yeah. She's probably still playing WoW. Yeah, to this day. The last <laughs> video game my aunt played was like fucking Donkey Kong on Super Nintendo. But, <laughs> and that's a banger. But, Classic. You know, yeah. So... So she's watching it with fresh eyes and she's been really enjoying it. But she said to me tonight, she called me right before we started recording. And I was like, oh, how'd you like the episode? She's like, oh, yeah, it was really good. She, but she's like, I hate Ellie. And I was like, why? She's like, I don't know. She's just kind of a bitch. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's Ellie's character, but she's not a bitch. She's hardened by the world that she was. I was like, imagine. Yeah. I was like, why don't you? I was like, how do you think you would be if you grew up in a fucking fascist, like militarized safe zone? She's like, yeah, I guess so. And then, you know, but it, it something dawned on me because I, I was kind of talking to her about certain beats of the story because obviously in the game, like, the two warm up to each other. That's like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But there are things with Ellie in the game that are very, like, you know, sometimes they're, like, focused on with, like, there's a particular scene with giraffes. It's very famous from the game. Uh, which we've gotten cheated out of in the show so far. Ooh. She had a moment similar with the monkeys when they were at the college, and she's like, ooh, monkeys. Mm. Yeah. But she's so filled with wonder because she's in the world for the first time. Yeah, right. Uh, but I don't think the show is really expressing Ellie that well. For my aunt to say, I don't like Ellie, it's that the sh the show is not presenting her properly. Yeah, they're focusing more on her That's crudeness true. than her wonderment. Mhm. Mm mm. And 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 like <clears throat> while we are seeing her like kind of warm up to him and her warm up to her, there's still like a little bit of a separation there where it's not I don't think at least my aunt, maybe she's just a dumbass, but I don't think it's fully getting through to the audience that's not familiar with the game. That this is becoming a daughter, a father daughter relationship. Yeah. But again, in nine hours, that's that's difficult to do when you're trying hard, to flesh yeah. out a whole fucking thing. Exactly. Yeah. Because like, <clears throat> there's not enough. Uh, you couldn't just show like back to back episodes of them just walking and saying like no, little right. quips or whatever. That, Absolutely like in the not. Game, right. So mm -hmm. yeah. It's a hard balance. Absolutely. It is a hard balance. And again, I think the show is great. I think it's enjoyable. But, you know, as I said, going into the show, what made me nervous is like, that's the main focus. Yeah. So if, if we come out of this shit, because I don't know. Do you know how the game ends, Marvin? Mm -mm. Okay, so I won't, I won't say it specifically, but the, the, the end of the game, there's a, there's a, how do I word it? There's a, a payoff, if you will. Not so much, that's actually the wrong word to use. There's a, like, the, the end of the game solely relies on the fact that, that you understand the, the bond that these two have formed. Mm. And if we don't have that leading into the end, provided they end this season the way they ended the first game, yeah. 
then you fucked it all up. Mm. And I think the whole season will have been for nothing. Dusty, would yeah. you agree with me there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Okay, so we're on the same page. I mean, listen, there's three episodes left. We'll see where it goes. This next episode, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but this next one, if it's going where I am pretty certain it's going, it's going to be a big moment for the two of them. So we'll see how it goes from there. Okay. But otherwise, I mean, it's still a good show. I'm still really enjoying it. But I think I'm enjoying it more just because I know yeah. where it's going and what to come. You know what I mean? I think I think yeah, if it like on its own, I would if I had never played the game, I'd probably still be enjoying the show. But I, I am enjoying it much more because of the things I know from the game. That's all. Yeah, I think that's fair. All right. Well, <sighs> shall we get into the news this week, folks? Dusty, we as well. Dusty's an old newsman. He used to work in video game journalism, and now he's a muckraker mm-hmm. for the Harsh Language Podcast, pulling up all the, the hot entertainment news. Real quick, before you start, I have a news piece of my own. Two news pieces, actually. Ooh. I hope you didn't pull these for yourself. If you did, I apologize. <laughs> but we were just talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, and I have it on good authority that this movie didn't have the greatest opening weekend. It opened to $104 million, which is, you know, pretty good. 120. It was 120? Yes. Okay. So you were going to cover this? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why wouldn't I cover this? I don't know. I just Maybe you missed it. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Let me step on your toes yeah. a little bit because I was excited Next to bring day, this yeah. up. So apparently, second weekend had a 70% drop off, made $32 million. Single biggest second weekend box office drop in the history of the MCU. Yep. So the question I blame the critics. Well, no, the question I I pose here. So here, here's the thing, right? Some people are saying, Hey, this is, this is comic book movie fatigue, folks. This is what you get when you inundate an audience with comic book movies. I don't think it's comic book movie fatigue. I think it's mediocre movie fatigue. Ooh, because how are you going to get, I think this speaks to people not liking it enough to a go back and see it again because I mm. know several people that go to the Ed. Ed has seen certain, some Marvel movies like three, four fucking times in the theaters, right? And I, I've it sometimes still did done better it too. than Ant Man and the Wasp in its second weekend, though. Did it? <laughs> yeah. No, how could Ant-Man that be? And the Wasp, because uh, the seventy percent drop is how much you made first week into second. Oh, weekend. right, it's based off. So, Ant Man and the Wasp, yeah, yeah Ant Man and the Wasp didn't quite make one hundred and twenty million. So, while the Ant Man and the Wasp only made twenty nine million in its second weekend, and okay. Quantum Mania made thirty two, so it still yeah. did better. But yeah, I mean, they've had a lot of movies that have been in that area. This is just the biggest one: uh, Thor: Love and Thunder, Black Widow. I think both sixty seven percent drops. Uh, even DC, like Superman versus Batman, saw like a 69% drop, which is very similar to what right. Quantum Mania saw. So. Well, so I was going to say, I think this speaks to, A, people not, going, people not liking it enough to go back and see it, and also people not liking it enough to tell their friends to go fucking see it. Yeah. The power right. word of mouth. Yeah. Even which for the It MCU. was the best opening yeah. for an Ant-Man movie, bro. Right. For an but Ant-Man to movie. to your point... Marvel's six biggest drops uh, in first to second weekend have all come since 2021. So it could be somewhat of fatigue because they're all the new movies, but it could also, I mean, I think it's a mix of both that they're the storylines. They're trying to do this, um, you know, assembly line superhero movie like they did kind of with, phase one, two, and three, and it's just not working as well in the new, the new phase. Yeah, and like I said when we talked about the movie, like, this is supposed to be, this is the movie that's supposed to be setting up the next phase and, like, the next big fucking, you know, right. Avengers-level villain, like, it's looking kind of rough. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say, like, fucking, oh my god, like, Marvel's fucking falling off like it's the end of the world or anything like that. I think they could bounce back, but I think this is definitely a concern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got a question. Uh, yeah. Do you think um, when you have th- these back-to-back movies that aren't doing well, does it make it easier to have a good comeback movie or does it make it harder to have a good comeback movie? Like if it's like a, a decent or a good movie but not great, will people be more 
excited for it that it's just good or you know i think easier than decent really i I think easier because you get into you you get comfortable right as an audience you know i i i was listening back i was editing one of our videos and i i was listening to what we were talking about about um you know you guys had made the joke that i was chasing the dragon it's like (laughs) the heroin addict and i said no I, i was given like i was given a specific product and i expect that every single time now because i i've gotten it for so long so yeah. in the same way i think now through this phase four to five i think now we're being conditioned to kind of come out of these like eh, all right it was yeah. okay so if fucking guardians is like a fucking banger we're gonna be like oh my god like it's for their fucking back. back yeah <laughs> so i yeah. do th- i do think it's easier like i said last time i think they could write the ship it's just you know, a little bit, just a little bit more of a, like attention to detail. Like there's just a lot of little things that are starting to add up is what's doing yeah. it. So I think easier for sure. Yeah. I think that makes sense. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, people that smoke weed, you know, <laughs> if they start smoking mid and then they go back to the good shit, it's like, all right, mm-hmm. this is, this is, this is where it's at. Yeah. But like it that- also could be like, it's not like Marvel has always made these fucking mid movies obviously though so maybe it maybe it won't be as easy as you think maybe it's like people be like ah this wasn't good enough this maybe like you said i mean they listen still, they yeah. still might be chasing the i dragon. mean it's like like going to your favorite restaurant and you order the same thing every time that's true uh, nine times out of ten uh, or even maybe it's only seven times out of ten it's a <laughs> banger but a couple of times it's not going to be as good the standards it that's can't true. be 10 out of 10 every time the only difference is, is you can't you can't send the Marvel movie back. That's like, true. You can send your food back. And again, yeah. to be fair, we all know, maybe we all don't say it or want to believe it or or want to accept it, but that f- from the beginning to end game is a very tough act to follow. Yeah. Like I bet the, they blew their load. They we got we got to just say it how it is. Like it, like <laughs> that is a tough that is a tough thing to follow. So yeah, especially when you just it's fucking pump the greatest multi film <laughs> story arc ever produced. Yeah, yeah, no, it is for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. But yeah. I thought that was interesting. So, yeah, uh, sorry again to step on your toes. Let me just no. drop my second sorry. news story again. Hopefully, you didn't pull this one, but apparently, we're getting more Lord of the Rings. Apparently, it was announced yeah. that, yeah. Oh, say, so I'll let the you show, take, I'll let you take this over. Go ahead. Yeah. Was this part of your news coverage? Yep. Okay, good. Sorry. Lord of the Rings <laughs> franchise has made almost three billion dollars at the box Ooh. office and earned itself Ooh. 17 Oscar wins. Mm. And while the Rings of Power isn't what many fans wanted, some are also upset about the latest development, which is We're getting more, baby. Warner Brothers Pictures and New Line Cinema have closed a multi-year deal with Embracer Group, who recently bought all the IP to Lord of the Rings. Um, which is um, film, animation, live action performances, and amusement park stuff, I believe. Amazon mm-hmm. obviously has the TV rights, so that stays with them. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they're going to produce a ba- series of film based on Tolkien's work. And um, more no, fucking five hour movies. <laughs> yeah. No word on when it will take place in Middle Earth, but it will just be basically expanding Middle Earth. Uh, apparently, they've been in talks with uh, director Peter Jackson and his writing partners, so they're kept in the loop. Who knows if he'll come back on to direct more? But yeah, you know, this is. Um, what was the last thing he directed? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. You go ahead. I'm going to look it up. Uh, okay. Um, but Curious. Yeah, so. Since we're jumping around between the Disney and the WB, we'll uh, oh, keep shit. jumping around here. Uh, actually, we're yeah, untitled. The untitled Rick and Michonne spinoff, speaking of The Walking Dead, has started uh-huh. filming. This is going to be a six-episode limited series. Go ahead. Last Ain't no way they go on with another fucking Walking Dead show. The last movie mm-hmm. he directed was The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies in 2014. Okay. Then he did that documentary, They Shall Now Grow Old, which was where he took the World War One footage and remastered it. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I, um, I remember that, though. Yeah. And There's then some a, good stuff in there. And he's and apparently he in development for 2027, according to IMDb, is Untitled Adventures of Tintin sequel. So he's been out of the movie loop for a while. 
Yeah. I was just curious because I was wondering when you were talking about that, whether or not they're going to bring him back. Yeah. Who knows? So you said this is going to be an expansion of this Tolkien world. Right? Uh, well, Middle Earth, basically Middle Earth. So Middle Earth has, I think, uh, three, three seasons. They're There's out of books. Like, so. <laughs> oh, right. so well, the, the show takes place in the second era. There's three, basically three eras to Middle Earth. And the, the, the show on Amazon right now takes place in like the second era, which is, you know, th- a few thousand years before uh, the Lord of the Rings. So it could take place in the third era, which is the Lord of the Rings movies and books, you know, mostly. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So well, we who, who knows? Content. We don't know what time. Yeah. There's, the, I mean, it's not going to cover the characters we've already covered. It'll probably be all new characters in Middle Earth doing something else. Sure. Yeah. Just, just an expansion of the universe like Star Wars has done Ooh, don't. and and stuff like that because that's that's kind of what they want to do is they want to turn it into a star wars type universe where they can just make any type of show uh, i see or movie they want within the universe yeah as long as it ain't new yeah. trilogy star wars i guess they got you know, they can make it work <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't even, every time i hear that i hate my <laughs> i age by like three or four years uh um, we were talking about Tulsa. Oh, no, no, we weren't talking about Tulsa King. We actually just did a, released a video on our review of Tulsa King, right? That just came out. Yep. Check yep. it out. Okay. Yes, so that's, that was Sly Stallone's first shot starring in a television series. And now the governor is going to get his own chance. Uh, Ooh. Netflix has released a teaser for a show titled Fubar starring Arnold Schwarzenegger which is dubbed as a global spy thriller. It's like a father-daughter, True Lies-esque action comedy. Um, his, apparently, he's going to he's gonna play the dad, and then uh, Fabiana Udinio is playing the daughter. They're both in the CIA. <laughs> they don't know that each other is in the CIA, and then they find out, I think, and that, you know. I just want to say, there, is the, there. I just <laughs> want to say, Hollywood, you're obviously out of ideas. <laughs> if you want to make a sequel, make a fucking True Lies sequel. You just like it just dawned on well, me. They're making when you said a that. television show of True we're Lies. A, yes, we're getting a True Lies television show. If I think it's, it's if but it's, I think it's NBC or ABC. Listen to me. Yeah, fuck that. I'm already disinterested. <laughs> make, ABC. Get me a True Lies sequel right now. D- Jamie Lee Curtis is fucking having a resurgence in her career because of everything, everywhere, all at once, and Halloween and all this mm. shit. Give me a fucking True Lies sequel with fucking Jamie Lee and Arnold, and they're like a spy team. I want to see. It would it. be like Red, though. Almost, it would be a little too close to Red. I, I don't think. give Wouldn't a it? fuck. It would be great. True Lies is so good. It's I'm so good. It. Yeah, ah, oh, the James great. Cameron movie. My boy, great. fucking Tom Arnold is in it. Like, bring them all back. Obviously, you can't bring back Bill Paxton. Rest in peace. But. Fuck, that'd be so good. Yeah. Oh, maybe we got to add that to a Make Marvin uh, Watch. That'd be a fun one. Yeah. Maybe. Dusty, next month is your pick. Throw it in yeah. there. <laughs> Another Let's 80s, see. or is this 90s? 94. 90s, 90s, yeah. Uh, speaking of 90s, one of Dana Carvey's latest Instagram posts has stirred rumors that a possible third installment of Wayne's World Ooh. could oh, be shit. a possibility. Uh, it's just a pretty vague post in the post. You see both him and Myers in character in the famous, in the infamous basement with Garth painting a picture of Wayne. He's currently like in family. character. They are, or is like an yeah, old picture of them. It's in, uh, no, it's a new picture. Oh, okay. So it's them like now of in 2023. Them. Okay. In, in yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So I couldn't tell you what a fucking Wayne's world movie was about. It was, a, it's based off of so long. It was an old SNL skit. And they're just basically yeah. like two rockers that like do shit. Okay. The second one actually had a different script, but it was too close to another movie, I want to say. So they scrapped it and then they pitched the whole, oh, Wayne stuck. And yeah. That wasn't quite as good. I will say in similar fashion, the Bill and Ted movie came mm-hmm. out, the third one. Like, what is it? Like I have not seen the new one. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I cried in it. I need to watch it. <laughs> no shocker, but it was good. Hmm. Dude, they need to remake Dude, Where's My Car? That's what they oh need to Oh, my God, remake. stop. That movie's so terrible. <laughs> oh, man. So what what do you mean say? terrible? What the fuck? No, and then. 
No, so no, I did. Um, <laughs> Mario Brothers has been bumped up two days uh, from the seventh right. to the fifth, which is a Wednesday. So um, that. What they not want so to compete a, with from a Friday to a Wednesday. You only do yeah, that. They just they they want bigger opening weekend numbers. What else is coming out with that though? Mm. Uh, I don't remember. Got to be something that they don't want to compete with. Got to be. I don't know. Uh, we did that quantum mania. Okay, so Rosario Dawson My has girl. given a tentative release for the Ahsoka uh, series. It's this fall. The Asker one has come out. She said she's pretty sure it's coming out this fall sometime. They filmed mm-hmm. it already Let's or no? Go. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. It's coming out this fall. It's done. They're there. I don't know that they're done with post production, but they're done probably not filming. So. This will probably continue with her search for Grand Animal Thrawn, which basically uh, came to a dead end in, was it the Mandalorian? And then in Boba Fett, we see her. But we haven't met Thrawn yet in the show. Correct. She's just looking for him. Yeah. yeah. She mentions him in the Mandalorian. She fights the. Does she say, she she doesn't say him by name, though, does she? She says, Where is, uh, yes, Grand Animal? She actually says his name. Oh, she does. Okay. Because he's like a popular character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was big in Rebels, um, and so, yeah, Ezra Bridger, the Jedi that's in Rebels, is going to be in, and I think uh, there's a couple other And real quick, being that characters. that Mando's coming out tonight, well, it's out now, mm-hmm. but when we're recording, um, his last appearance was in the Boba Fett show, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I forget, because Boba and Fett that's came was, out. Was, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was Ahsoka's last uh, appearance, too. She, like I said, she was helping Luke build his Jedi temple. But that was in um, that was in the last season of Mandalorian. No, that was Boba Fett. I'm pretty sure. No, I don't think so. Was it? Yeah. Uh huh. Because yeah. So oh, that's in, right. In, you know, you're right. You're right. You're right. I forgot in how Mandalorian. Much, yeah. He, and she's she's in she's in both and they're in both and that's why it gets confusing because yeah. she's in the Mandalorian. He uh, he meets her or no? You see her. She's at and the they meet each other. When she's he at, goes no, to collect the she, kid. That's in. Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, well, in the Mandalorian, they're at that base. Yes, where yes, yes, yes. The, the the woods are ruined and everything. But mm-hmm. yeah, anywho, yeah, it's it's all mixed together. But we should actually get a trailer for this pretty soon. We actually have a Star Wars celebration taking place in London sometime early April. I think the second week mm. of April. So we should get a lot more Star Wars trailers coming. I out. I, I forgot how much Mandalorian. How much he was in Boba Fett? Yeah, like it was a big. And it was I forgot about. It was that. actually leaked that Boba Fett is going to play a pretty big role in Mandalorian Star Wars. Hong Kong Facebook page posted <laughs> something about it, um, and it said plus bounty hunter Boba Fett and other old allies and new enemies, and then it was immediately taken down after. Well, he said. owes him the favor. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll probably see a lot of recurring characters in these Disney Plus shows. How long do we think Mandalorian's going to go for? Like, I get that it's like a fun show and stuff, but like, oh man. Well, he talked about it. He said (laughs) they will definitely have definitive story arcs, but he hasn't thought about what they are or how long that will be, but he thinks that it's going to be a healthy show. Like, I would imagine this one going eight, eight, nine seasons. Damn. Maybe. I mean, they're gonna milk the fuck out of this like post mm-hmm. return return of the Jedi like world. So mm. we'll see. Yeah, I still haven't started Mandalorian yet. That's okay. It's not like a. I don't think it's a must watch show. Like it's good, but I think people like way overhype it. Personally, mm-hmm. it's fun. It's fun, but it's not. It ain't. You know, don't go into it expecting fucking Andor. Okay, because that shit was like next level. Speaking of, I saw that. Um, what's his name? Diego. Diego Luna. Was, he said that season two was going to be better than season one. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. Mm-hmm. There was an article. I think it was last week. It, it came out February twentieth. This article, bro. That show's a fucking masterpiece. I don't care what it like. That show was so yeah. good. Yeah. Ugh, god. Anyway. All right. So Silk is coming. Um, that's uh, I'll yeah. be excited for that. It's probably the one thing in the Star Wars franchise I'm looking forward to the most, besides seeing how they delve out. Because you said all these characters are yeah intertwined in the show, so they'll show up everywhere. But anywho, right. 
Um, Steven Yun is the latest actor to join the Thunderbolts cast already in an unyet named character, like all the rest of them, basically. <laughs> uh, he's most famous known for being Glenn. He lost a fight with Lucille, got his head cracked open. Fucking eye hanging out and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to be in the Thunderbolts. Um, so Who could he be playing? Forward, yeah. That's interesting. I don't know. Yep. That is interesting. Um, industry insider Daniel Rickman claims that Werner Herzog is reportedly in talks to play a role in the upcoming Wonder Man series hmm. uh, for Disney. And this is a live action series following Simon Williams as it goes from being a Hollywood actor to a super- superhero after suddenly gaining powers and being thrust into the superhero world. Hmm. Um, is he a mutant? Uh, he, I uh, believe he's in the comics, but I don't know if he will be in the show. The Disney Plus series going to be helmed by Shang-Chi director Destin Daniel Cretton and written by Andrew Guest, who's known for doing Brooklyn Nine-Nine, 30 Rock, and Hawkeye. So it's going to have some comedic value to it. Um, Yaya Abdul-Mantin the second is confirmed to be in the lead role as Simon, and then there's rumors that Demetrius Gross is going to be playing his brother Eric, who's also known as the Grim Reaper and the uh, antagonist to Ooh. the main character. So it's brothers again, brother. Okay. Um, nice. Also, Ben Kingsley is going to reprise his role as Trevor Slattery in the show because, you know, Hollywood guys, and he's... Right. Fake villain. Yeah. A lot of people hated that so, shit. Ed, oh, my yeah. God. Ed was uh, irate. Was, yeah. Was, uh, but they vindicated. Ed, they vindicated themselves. I guess. We got a good Mandarin in Shang-Chi. Yeah. Um, Succession is starting up. We talked about that, but this will be the last season. Yeah. Season four. It will end with this. I think it was Brian Cox who's saying, uh, I haven't know, given, the name of the sh- given the name of the show, what did you expect? This can't go on forever. It's called Succession. So, yeah. you know, they're going to end it when somebody else takes over. I haven't watched that. Um, Something about just watching obnoxious rich people like argue with each other doesn't appeal to me. I mean, okay. the first season I thought was hilarious, uh, but then yeah, the, it just grows on you. It's like a, it's just an annoying like it's just, it, it grinds you know it grinds your gears after. Right. You, but yeah, I don't know. Let's we'll see. Um, you remember us talking about the yesterday movie? Um, the, they released the two Anna de Armas fans uh, sued because no, they sued oh, yeah. Universal because the false advertising because yep. Anna de Armas was in the trailer but not actually in the movie because mm-hmm. of the edits. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they were suing for false advertising. I vaguely remember this. Yep. Okay. Well, the Snyder fans have decided to weaponize that and they want to go after. WB because Henry Cavill was in a black at black Adam, you know, post credit scene and he's not going to be Superman anymore. (laughs) And that's false advertising. So they're trying to get some lawyers on their back so they could fucking see these people are relentless. Dude, Trump should have had fucking Snyder fans storm the Capitol, not these fucking burning (laughs) man people. They would have got that shit done because they're relentless. You think they're going to show up to the Capitol when they don't show up to the fucking theater? Dude, they might. No suit has been filed yet, but they are um, talking about it on Twitter, I guess, is what I saw. But anywho, uh, Uh, speaking of lawsuits, Warner Brothers Discovery has filed a lawsuit in New York State Supreme Court accusing Paramount Global of undermining the licensing, licensing deal for streaming rights to the Comedy Central South Park. Um, the suit claims Paramount Global breached contract by producing South Park specials and other content for Paramount Plus. Um, because when they made the deal to do South Park, I think they bid uh, three seasons, 10 episodes each. Um, but that would be seasons 24, 25, and 26. Season 24 was only like two one hour specials. I think that was because of COVID, maybe. And then season 25 was only six episodes. And I think 26 is also going to be six episodes. They were expecting 30. They didn't get 30. And some of the South Park content was created on for Paramount Plus and not for, you know, HBO Max or whatever. HBO Max. It's not so, on Comedy Central anymore? Or are they owned by uh, one of those? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's on HBO Max now, I think. It might be on Comedy Central, but... Um, 
Yeah, I didn't know it changed if it did. HBO Max had the rights. HBO Max bid for the rights. If Warner probably uh, owns Comedy Central yeah. or something like that. So Or Discovery, yeah. one of those, yeah. Right. Anyhow. These mergers um, are hard we, to keep track of. We got a Ted Lasso season three trailer that's coming out this month. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked about uh, all the shows that are coming out. There's actually some movies, pretty good movies coming out this month too. 65 is coming out. Tetris is coming out. Yeah, you're like, 3-3 three, is coming out. Five. I I am, yeah. Well, so like I said, I have Rami, Rami Bias, so. 65. Uh, is that the, uh... That's the dinosaurs, um, or we oh, yeah. we came to Earth 65 million years ago and on a spaceship. And what would your Sam Raimi bias have anything to do with this? He's involved. No, is he? He's not directing yeah. it. He's not. I don't see him credited as a writer. Uh, uh producer. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So he threw money at it. Mm. Okay. But yeah, we're also getting Scream Six, and we're getting John Wick Four. We're getting Shazam: Ooh. Fury of the Gods. And we're also getting Dungeons and Dragons Honor Monk Thieves. So we got a lot of sci-fi, a lot of action. And yeah, we, so, you know, a lot of movies. But anywho, the last piece of news, I don't know how you're going to feel about this one. Uh, second season of The Night Manager is in the works at Amazon Prime Video and yeah, the BBC. First season. You never watched The Night Manager? No. Okay. Uh, writer David Farr is returning to pen the script, and Tom Hiddleston <clears throat> is reprising his role as Jonathan Pine. Uh, the first season was fully adapted in the novel of the same name, and it's reported this they're going to order two eps, two seasons of it. So they're basically just expanding Tom Hiddleston's character, uh, Jonathan Pine, into whatever they want to do with it, because the book has already been covered in the first season. Hmm. Um, but it's about uh, the... the uh, Hiddleston's character is, stumbles across a bunch of weird uh, uh, situations. Interesting. As the night manager, this hotel. I thought you were a night manager fan. I thought you'd seen that, but I guess no. I never even I was, heard of I it. I was thinking, thinking of somebody else. It's a pretty good show. You should check it out. But it on the list, may yeah, maybe have Put to add it. List. Too much shit though, dude. <laughs> yeah, way too much. But uh, yeah, that's that's all the news for now. All right, nice. folks, there's the news. Thank you, Dusty. Thank mm-hmm. you, Dusty. I apologize once again for stepping on your toes. We're That's used right. to it. You're a habitual toe stepper. <laughs> I am a little bit. When nah. it comes to the news. Not always. Sometimes. Sometimes I see a hot I'm thing and kidding. I'm like, oh, I got to drop this shit just in case. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thank you once again. So let's get into this week's review. Uh, talking about <laughs> The Whale. Oh boy, watch out, boys. The contrarian train is coming through. Choo choo. I've Uh-oh. seen a lot of uh reviews about this movie. Now not a lot. I like to watch and read reviews after we watch something or I watch something just to get an idea, kind of, you know, gauge yeah. get a barometer for where people are at. Um but and I hate to be that guy. But I'm not sure if people really got this movie based on some of the stuff that I'm reading about it. Because, yeah. damn. Once I started reading reviews about how it was fat phobic, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm done reading reviews. I don't want to read anymore. Well, thankfully, I didn't see anything like that. I did hear that that was like controversy, that it's like, you know, fat phobic or body shaming and all this stuff. That's just, I think, annoying people being annoying. Yeah. And, and you'll always get that. I didn't see any of that. The thing that <clears throat> I saw was just just a lot of just like people talking about the story that just didn't really seem to get it. They took it at like face value. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's there wasn't really much of a plot to this movie. I feel like there was he, story and there was like, but it wasn't really like a it was like a loose, very loose plot. Yeah. It seemed like I think yeah. so. So well, let's get into it. Well, so the this... plot is the last week of uh, basically an yeah. obese man is yeah, so... the, the last week with an obese man is well, basically just, the plot. Well, just a yeah. man. So, so yeah. this is this is the yeah. whale directed by Darren Aronofsky. It's been making a lot of noise. Obviously, it's nominated for like a million awards. Um, Brendan Fraser is the star of this film, alongside uh, Sadie Sink from 
Uh, Running up that hill. Yeah, from Stranger Things, we got Hong Chow and Ty Simpkins and Samantha Morton. And, you know, this movie's been getting a lot of hype because of Brendan Fraser's performance, rightfully so. We'll go into oh, the yeah. performances. Uh, but, you know, I, I just, what Dusty said this is the story of, or the plot is the last few days of a fat man's life. But I don't think this movie, like, I, a lot of people talking about this movie like it's about an obese man. His obesity doesn't really have anything to do with the movie. Uh, and I know it sounds well, strange it, to say. It does, though. Well, it does, but not in the way that people are discussing it. Like, the movie is not about an obese man. The movie's, about, the movie's about grief. Yeah, and Correct. dealing with addiction. Uh, yes. Well, he's, he's in the situation he's in because he's obese. It's his last week because he's obese. So but, it is about an obese man <clears throat> and his last days, but... The story that you f you you see through the different character in his interactions, uh, him being obese has little to do with it except for maybe getting around the house. Uh, well, sometimes. I get. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't. At least in my interpretation of it, the movie is really not about his obesity at all. Like Marvin said, it's about addiction. Well, it's not even about addiction. Addiction is just like the vehicle for. Because yeah. this movie's about grief, and it's about how well, people... It's a, and it's, coping. It's about how people deal with grief in various different ways. Each character has yeah, their right. own way of dealing with something like that, or or trauma in general. And, mm -hmm. you know, his obesity... Because could, everybody in, every, in the movie is coping with some sort of Yes, absolutely. Issue. And, his, and, his, and, and his obesity could be... You know, you could throw anything into that. You could throw drug use, alcoholism, oh, yeah. really anything. Gambling, sex. Well, they did. That's what I'm saying. It's like the... The kid that no, ran no, away. No, no, I'm was... talking about him specifically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because right. he's like the centerpiece of the, the movie's about him, right? But sure. people, but people are people are people are talking about this movie as if it's about obesity and him being obese, and and I no. just I was like, wait, what? Like, what the fuck movie did you watch? Uh, because <laughs> to, to, that's the plot of the. It's not the story. It's the plot. To that's what you're saying I... is, you know, he's dealing with the grief of, hey, I was living a fake life. I got married to a woman as a gay man. I fell in love with a, with a, with a man. I had to, I left my wife and my child because I was in love with another person. That has, happens. Has just an immense think, amount. Uh, I'm sure has just an immense amount of, of, uh, guilt and remorse for doing that. And he's also grieving the loss of the love of his life, which is, you know, his partner. Yeah. Um, you know, Sadie Sink's character, Ellie, his daughter, she's dealing with the fact that her father left her mm -hmm. at the age of eight years old. So she grew up without a father. I think they yep. say in the movie, she, he's been gone for eight years. They hadn't seen each other in eight years. So, so she's 16 in the film. Um, mm -hmm. And she's dealing with an alcoholic mother, which brings us to Samantha Morton's character, Mary, which is his ex-wife and her mom. And she's grieving the fact that her husband, who she probably loved, because there's a scene later on in the movie where they're like kind of reminiscing. Yep. She loved him and they had a wonderful life together, it seemed. And he mm -hmm. left her. So she's dealing with that with alcoholism. We've got Hong Chao, who's Liz, and she's grieving the loss of her brother, who was mm -hmm. the partner of, of Charlie, our main character. Yeah. Yep. And also watching Charlie fall down the same. Yeah. But she's also an enabler. Because yep. while she's frustrated with him that he doesn't want to get the help and care that he needs, she's feeding him fucking meatball subs and fucking all sorts of crazy shit. Like she, all cur yeah, she's an enabler. She and you see, an enabler. That's you, how she copes. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. Because guess what? She talks about it a lot during the movie. Uh, we'll get into it a little bit more, but she lost her brother, but she tried to hold on to him and prevent him from doing what he did. We'll get into that, and then Ty Simpkins' character Thomas. He's this traveling evangelical trying to spread the word of Christ, LOL. And he is dealing with his own... His isn't really a, a grief sort of thing. His is just more of like a, um, I guess, like a trauma of... Well, he, he, was, he was a pothead that he ran away from home and stole money. And... Yeah, but he ran away from home because he was feeling like the pressure of his parents. So that's what I'm saying. It's not right. really, he's not grieving anything. Like everybody in the film has like a legitimate loss except for well, him. He, 
I mean, I he misses like... home. I yeah, think. I guess he that's fair. He technically lost his life, like his, right. his life as yeah. as it was. I guess that's fair. But I don't Which think in the well in so... the play, uh, they're actually Mormons, and they changed it up for the yeah. <laughs> so let me reframe what I said because. Every other character is their actions are directly related to the grieving. Sure. I don't think his actions are because he I mean, I guess maybe what he's doing, but what he's doing doesn't really seem to have anything he's to do. He's more trying with that. to find purpose in the world. Yes, yes. That's yeah, exactly. Which so, I mean, um they all kind of are in their own right too. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, yeah. we all are, everybody. That's uh, Yeah, that's true. What is life? Yeah, it's also like um not just grieving, but Everyone's kind of like living a lie, I think. Um, especially this guy. Yeah. Uh I think the other characters are too though. Like um Sadie's like she's she's like um she's like almost forcing herself to be detached from the world. Who? Oh, when, Sadie huh? Sink Ellie. Sorry, Ellie. Um I was like, wait a second, what? <laughs> so she's like forcing herself to be detached from the world when she 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 kind of seems like a a caring person and someone that is looking for like friendship. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because of how quickly she attaches to, uh, to our boy Thomas. Well, yeah. So let's get into that a little bit. So this is the story of our boy, Charlie played by Brendan Fraser. He is a morbidly. Fraser. Okay. He is a, <laughs> didn't he recently correct everybody too, actually? Yes. Yeah, he did. I think like Brendan, Razor, there's no I, it's yeah, not Brendan Frazier. Fraser. It's Fraser. Yeah. So he is a uh it's Jeff, not GIF. Not again with this. <laughs> Just saying. He's a morbidly obese English teacher, and um he's essentially and I say essentially, we'll again touch on that in a bit, but he is in the last <clears throat> excuse me. He is knowingly in the last days of his life, and yep. he is attempting to reconnect with his daughter. Ellie, after not seeing her for eight years, after walking out on her and her mother. And uh, as Dusty touched on, this is based on a play mm -hmm. written by Samuel D. Hunter, and Samuel D. Hunter uh, wrote the screenplay for this as well. And as I said, it's directed by Darren Aronofsky. Now, Darren Aronofsky is a pretty divisive filmmaker, to say the least. Um, he's got some very, very good movies under his belt. And then he's got some movies that haven't been uh, as well received as his others. Um, his his last movie, Mother, kind of got shit on. Mm. Um, Noah, a movie that came out in 2014, kind of got shit on. And then he got some of his bangers, which Black Swan, The Wrestler, The Fountain, That's Requiem a for a Dream. Yep. So, but, but he, uh, Darren Aronofsky, I'm a huge fan of his, by the way. Uh, so I was excited coming into this, but uh, Darren Aronofsky is, how do I word this? He's like one of the most unsubtle filmmakers alive. Like a lot of his, a lot of the way he, he shoots and the way he frames things, a lot of it is like just, just very like just out there. It's, it's very direct. Um, visually. How did you like the four by three aspect ratio? I really liked it. Uh, so I don't want to talk about that just yet. Cause I, that's, that's okay. I, 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 there's a reason why, but I wanted to talk about, so, so, you know, we, we, we started talking about these characters, right. And, um, you know, he's trying to reconnect with his daughter and, you mentioned that everybody is sort of has this like facade that they're putting on. His is clearly he's embarrassed of the way he looks. He hides his yep. camera, his webcam when he's doing his online uh, teaching. He has a pizza guy take money out of the mailbox and like leave the yep. pizza outside. He doesn't want to show himself. Um, Ellie, in the same way, I think she's got this like tough guy facade. <clears throat> Later in the film, uh, her mother, Mary is saying, like, she's a fucking, she's evil. She's a monster. Like, she, her goal is to just hurt people. And there's certain things that she does in the film. She's taking pictures of him and posting nasty shit on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> she's 
you know, she recorded fucking Thomas's character of him admitting to like the shit that he did. And she's like sending it to his church and parents back right. home to try to get him in trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. But that tough guy facade, you know, we all know that that's just, it's, that's, she's pushing people away so yeah, that she doesn't have to feel the exactly. pain of the hurt. Right. Of like her dad leaving her was traumatic. And yeah, you, absolutely. You, 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 you push people away or keep them at arm's length. And, and that's what she does with their social media posts is mm -hmm. she's basically living vicariously by watching their lives at a distance. Yeah. And, you know, uh, um, Liz, she's sort of doing a similar thing, you know, with the enabling, like, you know, she's, she's obviously caring for him and she's, you know, getting him nursing shit that she gets because she's a nurse, wheelchair, oxygen tank, all this stuff. But at the same time, you know, I guess she's massively enabling him. Yeah. So, I liked all those little, little things, but what you said, Marvin, this movie doesn't really have a plot. I did feel that throughout the movie. And by the time I was ended, I was like, what is this fucking about? Like, <laughs> like, all right, I get it. I get the melodrama of the movie. Like I get the story. Like I get it all, but like, really, what is it? Like, what did I watch here? Like, and I still don't even really know. So I, I have my own interpretation, and again, knowing how Darren Aronofsky makes his movies, um, I think a lot of this movie was meant to be open for interpretation, but then a little part of me thinks maybe, eh, maybe not, because the movie opens up sort of telling you what the fuck the movie's going to be about when he's talking to his students, he's talking about writing and how to, like, break through... And teaching them how to like not just look at the surface level stuff, mm -hmm. but really see what's underneath. And I think that's what a lot of people who have read their reviews didn't do. And they like at most all. most movies, <laughs> most stories, they'll tell you what the shit's about within the first couple of minutes. Yeah. And I think this did that. I think he's saying, like, hey, there's a lot of like subtext here. Like, just look beyond the surface level shit. That's why I said I don't think this movie's about an obese guy. Yeah. Really? Like, it's not about that. It's about it's about grief and how various people yeah. deal with it. Human interaction and human emotion is yeah. really um, what we're, you experience it as you watch it. Yeah, and there, and there are some things that are lost on me, too, like the symbolism with the bird. Um, you know, the, there's several scenes. He leaves a, a plate out for a bird, and he fills it up with, like, apple slices every so often, and the bird comes and eats it. By the end of the movie, the plate is broken, and the, and he realizes, like, oh, like, it's like shattered and, and disgusting. So at one point I was like, wait, was this all like in his head? Like, uh, like, I don't, I didn't really quite understand that. Um, but, but really at the end of the day, this is his story of redemption and like doing what he felt he needed to do, um, which is make up for what he did, uh, to his daughter. And, you know, we mentioned that it's based on a play. Um, and this is where, like, kind of I was a little bit bothered by this movie, is that it's shot like a play. Yeah, all in the mm -hmm. apartment. Well, they kept calling it an apartment, but it looks like a fucking house. Yeah, so... It's so, an apartment. So, Dusty, yeah. you said how to like the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. I did like it, uh, because with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, the murky lighting, it all leads to, like, the this claustrophobic feeling. It's all shot in his apartment. I think you only leave his apartment to the porch for like two scenes um, and the flashbacks. Yeah. But it's very clear. Darren Aronofsky doesn't want you to feel comfortable. He doesn't want you to like acclimate yourself to experiencing the movie. Um, and then, you know, you have the performance by Brendan Fraser that, that um, really doesn't let you let you off the hook either in terms of like emotionally, like he, he makes you feel fucked up a lot of yeah. times throughout the movie. You know, it's definitely hard to describe exactly all the feelings I felt watching this movie. If I had to put words to it, probably some feelings of uh, empathy, sympathy, frankly, uh, disgust. I mean, I know it mm -hmm. sounds mean, but no, nope. I'm sure it was He's, intentional yeah. to to evoke these feelings as. Uh, that's where the outsiders con looking in. Um, yeah. Well, sorry, good. No, I was. Yeah, I think uh, I think it showed a bunch of truths that we don't like to see as outsiders. Like 
whether it be an obese person or whether it be a drug addict or whatever it is, when you are that close to them, it's, it's very uncomfortable to, to, uh, to watch and to even like think of them as humans when you're, when you're that close, if you're, if you know, but I think the, the movie did a good job of showing us his human side, even though you, we might think of him as like, you know, this disgusting person or whatever initially, which I think that's just like your brain doing whatever your brain does. Right. It's not, it doesn't make you a bad person to, to have these, these, that type of feeling initially when you see something that you're not used to seeing. I don't know. I never really saw him as disgusting. Um, and what, I think that's where the controversy. That, that last binge scene. You yeah, think yeah. That was, yeah. That was, well, well yeah. that in and of itself was disgusting. Anybody doing it, it would be disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, but I think that's where the controversy is coming in a little bit because people are like, well, there are there are scenes that like legitimately are meant to make you be like, eh, fuck, like that's gross. Yeah. But I was wincing like I was watching Saw or some shit when he was fucking. Yeah, but I didn't like binging, that about I didn't like that about that the movie food. because yeah. like the whole time I'm like, for me personally, like I am like, I understand, like I empathize with why he let his life get this way. And I understand, like sure. I said it earlier. It doesn't have to be obesity. It could be anything. Yeah, that's what I say. It could be a fucking but, drug but, guy, whatever. I mean, it's yeah. like, I think what I'm trying to say is like, it's okay to initially ha have this feeling as long as you are able to have a, a, a change of thought or something like. Well, I, I don't mean? think like, the movie gives you the opportunity to do that. Because I don't think that's true. Because they specifically frame him as a disgusting slob basically yeah like i don't well, I think mean, there's ever a moment where like i don't know sometimes it just felt to me like they're they're leading you to feel like well i mean he fucking doesn't want to get help so uh, he deserves to die like in that type of mindset i don't think so i think they show you I, like i said I f you feel these things initially but if if you spend enough time with someone as you do in in movies i guess for example like you'll eventually have some type of compassion i would think or you're just like a psychopath like that's the way i see it at least well i mean again i just i i i think like on purpose the movie like presents him as a sideshow at on at certain points yeah for sure um maybe that was an attempt to like challenge the audience to see th beyond that again if 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 the initial conversation he's having with his students was any indication then yes it is challenging you to kind of see past like the surface level stuff yeah for all the characters for all of them for him like beyond the obesity it's a very caring and warm individual who's just trying to right some wrongs he did in his life you know through uh, ellie's fucking harsh fucking quite frankly annoying behavior throughout the movie like there's a girl who's just missed her dad um you know and so yeah. on and so forth Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I I am not fully disagreeing with what you said, but I, I do also understand why some people might be a little bit annoyed <clears throat> by that. But well, I again, the, like I said, real quick, Darren Aronofsky's not very he's he's like he's not he's not subtle at all. So like he will show you those things of like fucking a dude like eating three pizzas stacked together and like <laughs> fucking all this yeah. disgusting shit. And again, that's disgusting for anybody to do it. I weigh 130 pounds yeah. and it would be disgusting if I was doing it, you know? Yeah. What were you going to say, Dusty? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, Marvin was talking about the range of emotions that he felt. Uh, I think that's yeah. kind of one of the points of the movie is to show you and make you feel these wide, like the pendulum of emotions. Like you feel disgusted at one point, you feel charmed, you feel happy, you feel uh, sad, you know, you feel despair, you feel hope. Like it, it hits you like with, with every rainbow of range of all the emotions. Yeah. I'll tell and you I what I that's felt. That's mostly what it's trying to, to show us is just, these are just people experiencing <laughs> exactly. life. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what I felt. This movie gave me fucking chest pains. This whole fucking time, this dude's fucking got congestive heart failure and he's wheezing. And it's like, I'm feeling that shit because I am somebody that has a, a little bit of health anxiety. And anytime <laughs> I feel like the slightest ping or pang in my body, I'm like, oh, fuck, here it comes. This is here it. This is the big one. Read it to me. Read it. Yeah, Read so, it right now. So this shit made me anxious as fuck. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah, so we mentioned the movie's based on a play. I, I want to circle back to that because uh, really one of the things I did, the, the, the only thing I didn't like about the movie, that it was shot very much like, it was presented like a play. Um, and that was the closed-in environment. I know that was done to make you feel like sort of closed in the way he is in this life of his. Yeah, he's a shut-in now. But also the way they, like the... Um, there's a word for it. I think it's called boxing or something like that. If uh, it's it's the way people like move on stage, where it's like going from point A to point B, and they they he shoots it very much the way a play is. Um, in fact, like you know the door, let's say being like um, I don't know the technical terms for stage shit, but like exit or whatever. Like people walking to the door, they stop, have a moment of like clarity or they have a thought and then they deliver that thought and then they exit like it was very much like a play and right, yeah. to me that was a little bit jarring um and it was also shot like a play in the way they the acting was as good as his acting was and as good as ellie was or sadie sink was they were all like overacting a bit and that's mm. like that's like a stage thing because you it's a it's more performative on in a play um than it is typically in in film like the whole purpose of acting in a movie or a show is to make it as natural as possible and uh for those two characters again as good as his performance was it didn't really feel natural to me he does a lot of really like subtle and nuanced stuff with his eyes a lot of his emotion is told through his eyes um which was again fantastic but there was a lot of overacting in there so much so that I actually think as much as praise he's getting, and again, rightfully so, he should probably win Best Actor 100%. Yeah. I think the best actors in this movie were, were Samantha Morton and Hong Chow. I think they were the <laughs> only two natural uh, actors in this movie. Um, especially Samantha Morton. When she came in like late in the movie, she like kind of like blew me away. I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like really feeling for this, this woman. Yeah, she was good. Where a lot of times I mentioned I thought she was annoying. Ellie, like, I don't really feel bad for her because she's <laughs> just being annoying. Like, I understand her situation, and I feel bad that that happened to her, and she's growing up without her dad, for sure. But she's just, like, a fucking, in like, incessant bitch. <laughs> yeah. And, like, it was just put on a little too much. They don't give you room to just be like, ah, like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Especially when she interacts with, like, Thomas. When he starts coming around, and she's just, like... Smoke weed or I'm going to tell people you raped me. Or, like, she's <laughs> feeding her dad Ambien. Like, these aren't things, like, a normal human being would do. Right. So I had a hard yeah. time really empathizing with her outside of, like, just, okay, I get it. She doesn't have a dad. Okay, cool. But uh, the way the character was portrayed, it just, I didn't really care for. Yeah, she was, uh, she was definitely a little extra. I thought it was funny that uh, Charlie... They they tried to portray Charlie as understanding Ellie more than the mother when the mother as the, was the one raising her for the last fucking eight years. I thought that was like kind of like, eh, I don't, I don't know if you could really understand her more than the person that's been raising her just because, you know, well, she wrote a essay for you eight years ago. Yeah, but you can you can raise somebody and not be there, like that that is possible. Like she was shut off because she's. You know, a drunk. She, That's she, uh, for all we know, went to work, came home, drank herself to sleep, and really had no knowledge of what her daughter was up to. <clears> or, you know, she was basically on her own because kids well, have that. So, as as you have to take into account um, what I think again the the central theme of the film is 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 seeing through the surface level stuff. He sees the better in people, generally. Uh, we see that from him. But also, he views people very differently because he's a teacher. So his, yeah. his brain is wired differently. Teachers have to, like, find that thing in a student and extract it in order to be a successful teacher. So while she's seeing, like, her child as, like, a fucked up individual who doesn't care about anybody and just wants to make people hurt. Sure. You know, as you said, like, her mother would know her better. She was there with her for 16 years. Well, not necessarily, because she's seeing the surface-level stuff. He's not. He And he he saw that 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 essay she wrote way back when. Yeah. Like, he sees 
those those um, characteristics in her based off of that writing that only a teacher really could see because sure. they're analytical. And that's yeah. what he's trying to extract from her because he sees it. He knows it's in her uh, based off of that. I thought that was a really great moment in the movie when you finally realize that this... She was the one that wrote so, it. Yeah, throughout this movie, he keeps... Every time he thinks he's going to die, he's having chest pains and stuff. He, he, he's reading uh, parts of this essay about Moby Dick. Mm. And it turns out by the end of the movie that it was written by his daughter when she was eight years old. Um, so I thought that, that was a really nice, um, warm mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. And also, I should, it's worth noting that another thing that I think a lot of people aren't really like grasping is the parallels with Moby Dick. It's not by accident. And the movie's yep. not called The Whale because of his weight. The movie's called The Whale because obviously the term the white whale that's become synonymous with that unachievable, unattainable thing, that goal that people have in the story of Moby Dick. Captain Ahab wants to catch this fucking whale, even though he knows it's going to kill him in the end. The whale is not Charlie. You could argue it's a double entendre. I don't think it is. The whale, well, I mean, it is, but I don't, sure. <laughs> I think it is. The whale is not Charlie. The whale is Ellie. Hmm. His relationship with his daughter is the white whale. Like, right. that, that's what he's trying to achieve. Uh, I also, just real quick, I want to say one thing, too, about the being, you know, the stage acting. It tends to be a little bit overdramatic, as I mentioned. And they kept it for the film. And again, to his credit, while he did overact, and it was a bit dramatic, in the hands of a lesser actor, I think it could have gotten very cartoonish. But I don't think it ever did, because his performance was so great. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to say that. I didn't want you to think I was knocking him uh it was meant to be over dramatic like because they filmed it like a play i just didn't really care for it because it's a little bit jarring seeing a film do that you know what i mean yeah um, i understand that but yeah well, I well real quick going back to talking about him seeing or trying to bring out the better parts in illy mm -hmm. i think he was like uh kind of blinded by his um like he fabricated a, something of what she was. I don't think she she was like that great of a person or whatever that he was making her out to be. It was like a fantasy that he concocted these last eight years because he left her. Yeah. And he does want to make up for it. So like his mom, you say that she's only seeing the surface level things, but I think she's also seeing like, she's seeing the day-to-day, -day, like the real <laughs> side of her, whereas he has this, preconceived thing in his mind yeah and he's making her out to be oh because he even says you're perfect at one point like mm -hmm. well again no one's perfect and you know they i was you, just gonna you, say you could say he, you could say he's like enabling her to continue on being you know the in some of these ways that she is because he's you know the way he's he's trying to connect and make things right but i think you could argue that it's not the best way to <laughs> to write papers for her or whatever, whatever the case may be, even though he never actually wrote a paper, but you see what I'm trying to say. I don't think. Well, they leave a lot of it open to interpretation, as I said yeah. earlier. So it's like, you could easily see both sides of it. Yeah. That's why by the end of the movie, I was like, again, like, well, well what is this really about? I don't really have like a full grasp on it. It's just what I took away from it. Sure. Um, and speaking to that, the ending, uh, spoilers, you know, in his, what, they present as his dying moments. He finally breaks through to her. She has that moment where she says, daddy, please, mm -hmm. um, like just get help, you know, whatever, like, and he kind of like, they have this moment where she's reading her essay to him and there's like very warm sunlight spilling through from outside on him. And, mm -hmm. yep. and in what looks like, again, on the surface looks like his, death basically he he floats up and the screen goes white and the credits roll and yeah. again on the surface i think it's meant to tell you like oh well he died but i don't actually think that's the case i think that's just symbolic for him like finally achieving what he wanted he broke through to his daughter uh and that's him like like oh finally like this weight has been lifted mm -hmm. like off of him because clearly that's like a big piece of his grief is that yeah. he left his daughter he made this decision to leave his daughter and his wife um so i don't know that's kind of how i took it again it could go both ways um 
I honestly go many ways. Yeah. Like, as, like said, I said, it, the, the bird is. thing, like what's that symbolic for? Like the birds there. And then randomly the, the plate is broken at first. I was like, did, did Ellie break it? I don't think so. That's what I thought. But is he? Yeah. <laughs> ha, is this all in his head? Like, was he just imagining like his life going well for a minute before he dies, and then that's mm. like the that's like the dose of is that like the fucking top at the end of Inception? Like, whoa, <laughs> is it gonna wobble? Like, whoa, is it gonna fall? Right. Like, I didn't yeah. really quite understand, but I don't know. I mean, I kind of hate when movies do that shit where it's like it's just so ambiguous that you leave it with nothing of just like, oh well, <laughs> this is how I I'll never really know. Yeah, no, I, I feel that way too. <clears throat> I definitely. I, I usually can have a better um, interpretation, but this one was all over the place. Yeah, like, and, and you know, I didn't really quite understand what Thomas's point, like, what his purpose to being there was in the movie. Um, Thomas said his religious shit at the end. I thought yeah. he was about to get fucking stabbed. <laughs> just this whole thing was kind of, it just felt <laughs> a little bit out of place to me. And, like, you know, he's going to come inside to a stranger's house and just tell his entire life story to fucking some crazy bitch telling him to smoke weed or she's going to fucking claim he raped her. Like, <laughs> I don't know. A lot of it just seemed a little bit bizarre and weird. And, yeah. um, yeah. I don't know, Dusty, you didn't say a lot. What do, you, what do you got to say about this? Well, truth is stranger than fiction, but <clears throat> like I said, I, this, <laughs> I think this movie is more about showing uh, these characters and their their traumas and their potential to get, you know, get to back where, to where they wanted to be, you know, Ellie always wanted, you know, to have her dad. That was basically her white whale. Mm -hmm. uh, her mom, you know, her white whale was the family that she lost that, you yeah. know, basically this is basically the same. The well, kid, we, we all have Timothy, a whale. his was, yeah, sure. And <clears throat> it can change over time, but I, I don't know. I, you know, it's, you, you talk about <clears throat> the ending, uh, you don't maybe think it's him dying. It's him finally, getting through to his daughter but it can have multiple meanings and yeah 100 percent, absolutely highly argued you know like shane the end of shane where he's riding off and then the sunset he's shot he's kind of hunched over is he dead is he not dead you know you no, can argue sure. about yeah, it yeah absolutely but we'll, we'll never know but i i still think this is about just showing these characters this is just characters living their lives and mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know i don't think there's a whole there i mean the depth to it is the emotion you feel while you're yeah. watching these guys go through their shit and i don't know ellie she like I said, she she pushes people away and she she keeps that distance. But I, you know, she she still wants to feel a connection. And that's why she, you know, I think she did some of the shit she did because he. You could say he was wrong and that she was doing it. You said she did it because she's mean and she wanted to get him in trouble. Well, maybe she knew. Well, no, that, that's what her mother said. Right. Right. Yeah. But um, you know, her doing it, you know, to try and get him back in touch because all he wanted to do was go back home, and yeah. she gave him the push he needed. To make sure that happened, which is a good deed, but well, I, I don't think we really saw. I mean, we kind of do see, like, you you know, no good deed goes unpunished. But you know, being nice to someone can be good and be bad. You know, like, well, again, with every situation in the movie, you're getting both sides of the story, right? You know, with with him, with Charlie, it's like I really care about my daughter. I want to reconnect with my daughter. Okay, that's the good side. The bad side is, well, I'm about to die, and I'm not going to do anything about it. <laughs> did you really care about your daughter then right that's yeah. his right um you know well he already he, he already knows he has well no no, no i'm not here failure. i'm not here to argue like whether he's right or wrong i'm just saying they, they present both sides of the thing same with yeah, liz sure. oh she's super caring and she's like taking care of him and like making him comfortable and trying to help him yeah, she's actually but again nice, yeah. she's enabling the fuck out of him uh ellie you know brendan fraser's there arguing and on behalf of her, like, no, 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 she's super smart and she's great and she's a great person and she really cares about people. And then in comes her mom and's like, no, she's a fucking monster. That's yeah. So they're they're always showing you both sides with yeah. every character. So <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I just think by the that's why I say it. Like I honestly, when I when I when I ended the movie, I texted my friend George. He's a big Aronofsky fan too, and he's like, I was like, did you see the whale? He's like, no, not yet. Did you like it? I was like, I don't know. That's why I was texting you. <laughs> like, I don't really know. I I don't know. I wasn't left with like a definitive feeling. And you guys keep saying emotional. Like, I didn't really get emotional through this movie. I didn't like, mm. again, I empathize with everything that everybody was going through, but I was never like, 
like super emotional for some reason. And you guys know me, I cry in fucking everything. This didn't really, I got like a little choked up at when she said, daddy, p daddy, please. That was like the one moment. And that ending where there's like the flashback of them on the beach, which him and his wife talked about was like their happiest moment and all that good stuff. Sure. But like throughout the whole film, I, I wasn't really like emotional. I feel like everybody in this movie was like super fucking selfish, really. <laughs> yeah. Like at the end of the day, like his excuse for not like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to go to, I don't go to hospitals. I don't go to hospitals. I don't go to hospitals. Like they never really explain to you why they kind of just hint at the fact that it's because he has no insurance and doesn't want to waste his $120,000 that he saved up and wants to get to Ellie. <laughs> That's like a dumb yeah. fucking excuse. Well, personally. Well, I think it was also the the shame of what he had become too. Like he didn't want sure. Like Dusty said, he's a shut in at that point. He doesn't want yeah. people to see him. And like we said before, everyone's living like living this facade. Like so. I well, know. I mean, again, the movie presents his number one. Again, I get it. It's people are like the whole point is people are complicated and we're all complicated beings. So there's no real like black and white, but like you would no. think in a situation where like your one desire is to get back in touch with your daughter and have a relationship with her, you'd probably try to not die immediately. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. Well, I think his, his message is to his students that he even tried to portray to Ellie, you know, is uh, don't it, we all put on masks for different people. Like mm -hmm. if you're out in public and you come across a stranger, you may not be, as open or even exposed as you would to say, yeah, uh, you know, your best friend lives next door or something. So him, he, him and his teachings and even when his interactions with Ellie is trying to get people to realize that they need to break through that and, you know, ex expose yourself and tell me how you really feel. Don't write some bullshit that you think I want to hear. I want to hear what you really think. Let, yeah. You know, let it, let it out, express yourself. Yep. That's what I'm saying. He sees people in a different way because he's a teacher. Mm -hmm. Teachers, that's what you have to do to be a successful teacher is, I mean, he would hope, extract <laughs> those things, those unique characteristics of people. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know. Uh, is Brendan Fraser's, is the hype around his performance uh, legit? Absolutely. He was great. Um, yeah, great. I do think the the two adult women in the film, Hong Chao and Samantha Morton, once again, I think they're getting a little bit a shadow cast over them. I, I haven't really heard much about their performances, and I thought mm. they were great. Yeah. Um, I thought everyone was great. Yeah, no, everybody was very good, but they, like, I, Samantha Morton, I don't know, man, she just, like, kind of just, I thought she killed it. Um, is this movie a great movie? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think it's... I mean, it's nominated Best Picture, obviously. I don't know if I would... I don't know if I would put it up there with that, but it's definitely a good movie. It's not great. Um, but it's got a 7.8 on IMDb. That's very high. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I'm right there with IMDb, probably. Really? Seven and a half, yeah. Dusty? Yeah, I think seven and a half is a fair. I don't know if it... Good enough for an eight, but definitely a seven and a half. Yeah, I think that I think for me, it's it's like was largely carried by the performances. And anytime I like looked past that to try to like figure out what the story was, like it's just a simple story for sure. But I don't know. At the end of it, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, like <laughs> where did this go? Yeah, I I still think it's a good movie. I just I don't think it's like amazing. I would give it like a seven, probably. Hmm. Still good, I mean, it's, it's still good. I just, I don't know, something about it. it. Again, I can't put my finger on it. That's the thing that I really have, I'm having trouble with. Like, I even, when I ended the movie, I was like, what am I going to rate this? Like, I don't even know. Like, because. Yeah. I don't no, know. I understand. I understand. It's, it's. It's just, some, I don't want to say all over the place. It's just, it's this, it's just very, like, there's a. There's a really good way to do like an ambiguous ending, like uh, or not just ending, but story in general. Like uh, <clears throat> Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind has like super ambiguous ending. It's like I don't know if you've seen the movie Marvin, but nope. And well, that's a make Marvin watch for sure. <laughs> but I'll just say 
it leaves it leaves the fate of two characters in the film open ended, but mm. but it does it because like the story it's tied to the story as to why it's open ended. If that makes any sense, in this film, I didn't feel like any of it was tied to the story of the plot. It was just because, like, well, <laughs> maybe it could be this or maybe it could be that. I don't know. It's kind of the way I took it. I did like the movie. Didn't hate it, but I don't think it's it didn't blow me away really. I think that's fair. I will say for such a depressing movie, I really came out of this one in a much better mood than I did with uh, Banshees, for example. Banshees was pretty fucking depressing. Banshees yeah. put me under the fucking rug. <laughs> but this one, I was like, oh, okay. That's a funny I, I thing. Felt, I actually felt closure with this one. Right. Do you think he died? I think he died, which is another trauma upon his child but a well the uh, relationship repaired i guess <laughs> brendan fraser himself i think in an interview he um let me see if i can find the quote here real quick yeah he says uh ellie torments him when she cases him out the fist the first time she sees him uh, Fraser observes, noting a specific piece of blocking. Blocking. What did I say? Did I say blocking? Blocking's the movement in the stage. You said boxing. Boxing. Blocking. Yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, you notice that she stands behind him. She knows she can't look. He can't look over his shoulders. She's torturing him a little bit. She's cross. She's angry for the sadness she feels, and that's how this 17 year old brilliant kid um, comforts herself. Mm. She goads him into taking to his feet, knowing well. This is Brendan Fraser talking, by the way, that he likely can't and that it would make him very uncomfortable to do that without even having the assistance of his walker. But she takes it from him anyway and makes him prove himself, and he can't. Um, that scene, Fraser says, is key to understanding the film's conclusion, which brings Ellie and Charlie together for a genuine connection as she mm -hmm. reads the essay aloud. Again, Charlie attempts to rise up and walk toward her, that's where things get fantastical, as Fraser calls the final sequence an act of contrition for Charlie, in which he is liberated after finally breaking through her defensive armor, reaffirming mm. to Ellie that he sees her for the person she is and always was. Um, and then he says, he goes on to say, I know this is a little bit long, but it's important, I think. He says it's important because it's a Herculean effort that he makes to even get to his feet. For him to finally break through to her, humble himself before her and let her know that he made a mistake and is sorry for it. While his life has not physically ended that in that moment, I think that he knows he doesn't need to live any longer, which is why he takes off his breather. He's got her reading mm -hmm. the essay and he does take to his feet like three Olympic deadlifters, takes his baby steps to his baby. And in that beautiful two shot, a great white light appears and they look skyward. Depending on your belief system, spiritually or otherwise, we see that Charlie, with a touch of magic realism, finally does fly. Mm. So, again, I think it could be taken both ways, but... Both ways, yeah, for sure. You know, in a moment like that, I would have liked a little bit more of a definitive, I think, uh, conclusion. But that's just me. <laughs> um, yeah, so any final thoughts from you guys? Um... I, I love character dramas that don't go anywhere. <laughs> I don't agree that they were overacting. I know you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I don't agree. Um, uh, that's about it for me. Overacting is a, bad, <laughs> is a bad way to say it. It's just very dramatic <clears throat> because it's more stage-like. Yeah. And the reason that I liked the other two women's performances more is because I feel like they transcended that staginess, if you will. Mm. Yeah. They they were more traditional film acting. That's fair. Uh, so that was yeah, that was it. Um, but yeah, Brendan Fraser fucking killed it. Give this he guy did. a best picture. Um, we love Brendan Fraser. I love him. I've seen dramatic acting from him before. I know a lot of people, you know, Mummy and all that shit. He was in love a couple Mummy. episodes of the of Scrubs, which is one of my favorite shows, mm. and it is one of the saddest episodes of Scrubs like ever. Damn. So, uh, yeah, big fan of Brendan Fraser. The Mummy is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a great so movie. Good. I haven't seen him in a yeah. while. Uh, Just the first one, they get a little, but yeah, cheesy. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. There's our thoughts on the whale. 
let us know what you thought about this movie if you've watched it. Again, it's it's been a little bit divisive as far as I could tell. Uh, so, yeah, I'm interested to see what everybody thinks. So either leave a comment on YouTube or reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, we appreciate you listening or watching wherever you might be. Um, if you have not done so already, consider subscribing on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you in next week's episode. See ya. Gasta. <laughs> <laughs>